Well, good morning once again. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, if you want to be finding Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, that's where we're going to be today. And I can stand here this morning and tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt that God's wanting to talk to us this morning about this. I had to text Jen while she is at work, but I again... I began praying and seeking a message, and so he began to give me some scriptures, and I began to write them down, and then I was going to go in and read them and study them, and I just took the Bible and opened it up, and when I did, I was right on the first scripture that I'd wrote down, so I had no doubt that's where he wanted us, and then this morning I heard Brother Ken in, in his devotional and it's, it's all going right along with this. But what I'm going to tell you today, what God wants us to hear and believe you, I tell you this a lot, but he, he's, he's preaching to me, and if, he, if it applies to you, then you can, you, you can enjoy it too. But what I'm going to tell you this morning, if we, will, if we will choose to do this, it will change our lives. But I've got to tell you, it's your choice. I can't make you. God won't make you. God could make us, but then he wouldn't know if we truly loved him or not. You know, this morning in Sunday school, uh, y'all were studying where he asked Peter three times, do you love me? I believe that goes very deep. And I believe what Jesus was trying to tell Peter was, because you know as well as I do, that Jesus knew the answer to that question, amen? He he knew Peter's heart just like he knows our heart. He knows if we really love him or not. And so he knew that Peter loved him, but he kept asking him. (laughs) And I wonder how many times he's asked us. Because what he's saying is, if you love me, of course, he told Peter, you'll feed my sheep. But what does he tell us in John? If you, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Now, before I tell you what, what this is about, I want to lay a little groundwork. You do know in life it's up to you whether you obey God's word or not. And I don't have to tell you, it's heartbreaking when people choose not to. I was informed this week of a death of someone who struggled with alcohol addiction. And folks, as much as that can have whether it be drugs, alcohol, sex, whatever you want, whatever it is, it can have a mighty hold on somebody. Amen? But it cannot have a hold that Jesus cannot break. And at the end of the day, we have to own up to our own decisions. It is a decision we make. Whether it's an addiction or whether any kind of sin in our life, it is a choice that we make. And I was told that this person had been watching a lot of Christian TV. And they hoped they were in heaven today. Folks watching Christian TV don't get you to heaven. Going to church doesn't get you to heaven. Giving your heart and soul to Jesus Christ gets you to heaven. And when you do that, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you, like, like we talk so many times, the troubles don't end then. You still have trials and you still have troubles. But what I want to talk to you today about is, if you're truly living for God, this word that I'm fixing to define for you should define us. We, we've studied for the past couple of weeks 
that whether you're a Christian or whether you're lost, you'll have problems. Amen? So this word today that I'm going to define for you, it should set us apart. When these things happen to us that happen to the world, this word, this word should ooze out of us. And let me define it for you. It is the quality of being thankful, readiness to show appreciation for, and to return kindness. The word is gratitude. We should have gratitude in every situation in our lives. And we had it in our family just this week. And I was praying to God for my brother, and, and, and I prayed for him. And, and even though he didn't know it, I laid hands on him. <laughs> I laid hands on him and I prayed for him, hoping that his kidney would be okay. But then when he came back, he told me, you know, it's, it's not functioning right and they want to take it out. But let me show you how gratitude is supposed to work. Now, folks, that is, I don't care who you are, that would be a, some bad news, amen? You're going to have to lose an organ out of your body. But then God just turned me around on a dime and he said, you know what you prayed for? He said, I granted it. The other one is perfectly fine. It is healthy. And folks, you only need one. It's all how you look at it. And God is telling us today, I will take care of you and I do every time. You need to have some gratitude. You need to be thankful. Folks, bad things are going to happen. Christians get cancer, amen? Christians get diabetes. Things happen to Christians. But I'm going to take you into Scripture today, and I'm going to use the Apostle Paul, and I'm going to show you how our attitude about the things that happen to us should be different than the world because the world reacts one way, and we're supposed to be grateful, amen? We're supposed to be thankful to God because I'm going to tell you something. God has done something for me that none of you could do. None of you could make my sins go away. Amen. God done that for me. He knew. He looked down on me and he, and he loved me even when I didn't love him. And folks, I've committed awful sins. But when I took them to Jesus Christ and I asked him to forgive me, and he, and he did. But then you know what? There's one more step. I cannot continue to walk in that path. As the sign says on the church down at Russellville, it says repent. Folks, I had to turn in order for that forgiveness to be applied to my life. And because, listen to me, because I asked Jesus into my heart, and because since that point, I'm not saying I hadn't sinned, church. You can ask my wife. I sin quite often. But I put it under the blood. It convicts me. I'm convicted. I've turned from it. I'm, I'm trying to do better. And I hope and I pray that I sin less today than I did yesterday. And I hope and I pray that I sin less this year than I did last year. Folks, that's called growing in Christ. And that is essential for your salvation. Amen? You see, there's too many people, and I'm just going to be honest with you, okay? A lot of them are church people that just live negative lives. They just, they're down. Everything's bad, everything, you know, oh, this just, it's horrible. Really. It's, you know why it's so bad? Because it's me, you know. It's, you just don't understand. Anybody in here suffered like Jesus Christ? I was talking to a man the other day. He said, if you don't feel like you're blessed, he said, just look down the road. Folks, there's a lot of people hurting. Pretty much, I'd say at some point, everybody's hurting. What do we do about it? Do we just curl up in the fetal position and get in the corner? You know, I've used this illustration in here before, but it's, it, it works really well. I won't say the whole name, but there was a gentleman who went to work for the police department who did good guy, Wrong profession. You ever known anybody to pick the wrong profession? Well, we all know some people just, it happens. Well, we went to serve a search one, and he just happened to be the first in line. When we kicked the door, he wouldn't go. So they shoved him and said, and I'll just use the first name. They said, go, Zach. And we went. Afterwards, He's out in the backyard and he had a cigarette in his hand and he's just shaking. 
They said, what's wrong? He said, we got to come up with a different plan than goes that. <laughs> He's no longer there, by the way. But you see, he did not act like a police officer. Amen? So with certain roles, there's certain expectations. Amen? What are you going to do if you're a fireman, if your house is on fire and fireman shows up and he don't want to get up there too close because it's too hot? You expect him to go up there and put the fire out. Amen? Well, folks... <laughs> God expects us, his children, to respond differently to trials and tribulations than the world. Why is that? Before I get into scripture, what do we have that the world does not have? Jesus Christ. Who is our hope? Jesus Christ. Who is the only hope? Jesus Christ. You know that song, it's in the Heavenly Highway hymns, This is Not Our Home, We're Just Passing Through. If this was our home, if this was all there was to it, if when you died, that was it, there was no more, then I get it. Then we could curl up in the corner and play Poor Pitiful Me. But folks, there's more to it. Thank God Almighty there is more coming. Thank God Almighty that we're going to a home where there is no pain, there is no suffering, there is no tears, there is no hate, there is no strife. Folks, we get to go to heaven. So what on this earth should make us down? I want you to turn with me to Colossians chapter 2. And I want to ask you this question, and I'm going to answer it for you. Why should we live thankful no matter what? Because he tells us to. If you would, turn to Colossians chapter 2 and be finding verse 6. I'm going to give you plenty of time to find Colossians 2 chapter 6 and make my wife happy. I'm going to slow down. She says I get a little speedy sometimes. All right, Colossians chapter 2, I'm going to start in verse 6. It says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as ye have been taught, listen to this, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this lovely day you've given us. God, we thank you so much for the Sunday school lesson this morning and the messenger you sent it to us through. And Lord, we thank you for these children standing up, Lord, and working in your house. Lord, we thank you for the beautiful songs. Lord, we just thank you for life. Lord, now it comes the preaching of your word. And God, I pray with everything in me that you'd forgive me of my sins, Lord. And Lord, I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you would rise up in me today. And the words that come out of my mouth would be your words, Lord. And the thoughts in my head would be your thoughts. And I just pray, Lord, that you'd speak through me, Lord, and to us in a way that we understand. In a way that we can apply it to our lives, Lord, and draw closer to you and be what you've called us to be. And in Jesus' precious holy name, his children all prayed. Amen. Now, before we get into this and get started, let me show you one thing. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. Stop right there. If you are not saved, this is not for you yet. If you are saved, listen. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. Okay, if you're saved, so walk ye in him. Rooted. Dig in. Built up in him. And established in what? In the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. As we grow in Christ, there's two words, and I, we'll cover the other word in another sermon at another day, but there's two words as we grow in Christ that should just leap out of us. The one that we're not going to talk about today is humbleness or meekness. 
but the second is thanksgiving and gratefulness, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Just for a minute, don't look at your spouse, don't look at your neighbor, look at your own heart and ask your question, ask yourself this question. If somebody runs into me out in the world and they visit with me for five minutes, do I come across as a grateful person or a bitter person? Don't nod your head, don't, you know, don't, I'm asking you to be honest with yourself. Now, that, that I've asked you that question. You remember the woman who met Jesus at the well? Remember that story? When she went back to town and ran into the men, do you think they described her as a bitter woman or a thankful woman? How long has it been since you run into Jesus? Well, as the old commercial said, some of you remember this, how long has it been since you had a good bowl of Wolf brand chili? And the, and the next line, well, neighbor, that's too long. How long has it been since you ran in with Jesus? Well, brother and sister, that's too long. We need to be running into Jesus every day, all day. And... I'm not going to get too deep into this, but can I just tell you that it's in our nature to want other people to like us, amen? We, we want people to like us, don't we? Can I tell you as a pastor that's not easy? Because you have a decision to make. You either preach God's word and make some people mad, or you soften it and they'll like you. And I heard a very good sermon from one of my heroes who passed away this week, and that's Brother Charles Stanley, Dr. Charles Stanley. And he said it to his people, and I'll say it to you. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here to be your pastor. And because of that, I have to preach the Word of God. If I do not preach it, then I answer for it. But if I preach it, then you answer for it. But you see, as these things happen in our life, when people see how we react, and folks, I've failed so many times in this area. I've failed so many times to give God the thanks that I should and the gratitude. And when, and when bad things happen, I'm, I'm working on it, but you know, so many times I look at the bad when I should be looking at the good. And God's reminding us today why we should be thankful and why we should be rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught. I've been taught to be rooted and grounded in God. Now I need to do it. It's your decision. It's my decision. But you see abounding therein with thanksgiving. So if somebody ran into you, I asked you a minute ago, if somebody ran into you, and I'm not going to say ran into you at Walmart because that's a test that I'm not ready to pass, but if somebody runs into you out in town and they visit with you for five minutes, is thanksgiving abounding out of you? Or is it all negative? If you want to get a conversation started <laughs> in a group of people that you don't know, Complain about something hurting. You know how many people will join in with you? Because is there anybody in here that don't have something hurting? No. <laughs> how many people will jump in and join with you if you start talking about Jesus and how blessed you are? Not as many people that'll jump in and join you while you're hurting. But I heard this saying this week, and boy, did it, it just run all over me about the prodigal son. When he was hungry, he ate the husks. When he was starving, he went to the father. Folks, that's powerful. There's a lot of people I see in this world hungry, and they're eating the trash that the world has to offer. 
But I pray, and you'll say this sounds mean, but I pray they get to starving. I pray they get down as low as they can possibly get, that they can't reach anywhere else but to the Father. And I pray that they run to that Father. But as we grow, I'm just asking you, is that gratefulness abounding? Is it overflowing? Do they see us as being a thankful people, or do they see us as being a grouch, a negative, a doubter, a, a complainer, a whiner? There's probably some people in here that know who Doug and Wendy Weiner are. For those of you who don't know, consider yourself blessed. It was a horrible Saturday Night Live skit a long time ago, but they talk like this. Doug and Wendy Weiner. Everything they done, they whined about. If we were honest, is there some Doug and Wendy Weiners in here this morning? We want to look at the negative side of everything. Our cup's half empty. We've all been there, folks, and we've all been like that. But, folks, we have no business being like that. A child of God has no business living in the mud. I didn't figure that would get any amens, but let me try it again. <laughs> We're going to walk through some mud, amen? But we've got no business staying there. We get up. Why do we get up? Because there's a hand that pulls us up. Because we reach up. We realize that we cannot do it on our own. <laughs> I've heard that this morning. People realize they couldn't do it on their own. Folks, none of us are strong enough to do it on our own. But when we reach up, all of a sudden we gain access to strength that the devil has no control over. The devil cannot stop us when we reach up. The devil, matter of fact, will flee from us when we're holding our Father's hand. But you see, that in itself should make us grateful. That in itself, that he hung and died on a cross. And folks, this morning, even if you choose to reject Jesus Christ, even if you choose to walk through his blood and split the gates of hell wide open, if you choose that, you should be thankful for having the opportunity not to. Because he bled and died on that cross for every single person. Not just one, not just the Israelites, not just the chosen. He did it for the Gentiles. Folks, that's us. Amen? He did it for everybody. He done it for the child molesters. He done it for the rapists. He done it for the murderers. He done it for the dope smokers. He done it for the alcoholics. He done it for the, for the adulterers. He done it for everybody who, if, if they would accept it and turn from it, they don't have to go to hell. Folks, I'm sick of hearing people soften the word of God. It stands on its own. It always has and it always will. Yes, we serve a loving, merciful, graceful God, and I am so grateful for that this morning, but we serve a just God, and a, a God that sent his son to die on a cross for you. And if you reject it, you hear me this morning, you will pay the price of hell. There is only one way to heaven, and that's through the blood of Jesus Christ. And folks, when that happens, and I pray this morning with everything in me that the lost this morning come to Jesus. But I'm talking to his children this morning. You've already accepted him, and you've repented from your sin, and you're living for him. Don't you think you owe it to him to be thankful. I've asked you how you view yourself. And folks, sometimes it's hard for us to be honest with ourselves. But I, told, I asked you about that five-minute meeting with somebody. Did they see you as thankful or did they see you as grumpy and grumpy? Which one of those two do you think would lead them to Jesus Christ more? Folks, they see your cars out here. They know you go to Cagelsville Church. They know you claim to be a Christian. So if they see you at the store getting gas and all they hear out of your mouth is trash and complaining, why would they want to join you? They wouldn't. Folks, don't you have something more in your heart than they've got? 
Yes, you've got God. Don't you, aren't you excited that even if you die today, you get to go to heaven? Aren't you excited today that if Jesus Christ splits that eastern sky, folks, we're going with Him? Amen. Then we ought to be excited. We ought to, when they talk to us, they ought to see something that they're not seeing out of other people. Instead of the church looking like the world, wouldn't it be awesome if the world looked like the church? How are they going to know how to look if you don't show them? You are the church. You are the hands and the feet of God. The words that come out of your mouth better be the words of God. You're representing Him. I can remember going to an away game one time. I was, I think I was in 10th grade, and something got vandalized at the school we went to. I was with all the boys, so I know none of our boys did it. But we got a talking to anyway. We probably deserved it for something else, I'm quite sure. But he, they said, you represent Hector School. You represent every person from Hector when you go out into the community. Folks, let me tell you something. You represent Jesus Christ. If you claim to be a child of God today, in which you do because you're here, you're, you're, the people see your cars, they know you're here, you are claiming to be Jesus Christ disciples, his children, folks, then you represent him when you go out. That ought to change how we act in public, amen? And we ought to be happy. So you say, how should I be thankful? Well, let's go back to the Old Testament. By the way, this new push to get rid of the Old Testament, as Sister Frank said this morning, that fires me up. Folks, the Bible starts in Genesis, and it ends in Revelation and they're trying to say that the Old Testament is not relevant anymore. Folks, you get away from them people. That is straight from the pits of hell. Because I'm going to tell you what they're try why they're trying to eliminate the Old Testament. Because they're trying to eliminate the law. Hmm. Folks, the law is still pertinent, I promise you. Jesus Christ died on the cross so that we'd obey it for a different reason. But we still obey it. Amen? And matter of fact, Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law. He didn't. Folks, <laughs> ah, don't get me started. We'll, we'll, we'll do that another time. Let me get back to how do we praise God. Let's go to the Old Testament, to the book of Isaiah chapter 12. And I want to read to you what the prophet tells us. Isaiah chapter 12, verses 4 and 5. It says, And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord. Call upon his name. Declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he hath done excellent things. This is known in all the earth. Folks, do you think just because you can't sing as pretty as our choir up here that you shouldn't sing? Hmm. I'm going to tell you something. If you want to hear some bad singing, get within quarter mile of my mower or the tractor when I'm on with my headphones on. Because I'm, I promise you, I'm singing praises to my, my, my God. And I sound really good because I can't hear myself. Now, Jeff and Sylvia, they may can hear me. And if they start plugging their ears, I know I'm getting too loud. But you know what? Why shouldn't we go around singing? You born again? <laughs> then we ought to be happy. There ought to be joy coming out of us. You see, praise the Lord, call upon his name. Listen to this. Cause let me share with you real quickly one of my hang-ups in the past, and then I want to read this sentence to you again. When we went to Rock Springs on Sunday night, we'd have testimony service. And for some of you that don't come here on Sunday night, we have it here also. And that's a chance for you to stand up and thank God for what he does for you. The devil, he's sorry. Can I just be honest? He's sorry. He's pitiful. And he'd get in my mind, and he'll use whatever he can to keep you from doing what I'm fixing to read. And he'd say, if you get up and testify, people think you're bragging. On what? How good God is? <laughs> 
That's exactly what we're doing. We're saying how good our God is. And folks, I'm going to, uh, as your pastor, there's two things I want to tell you. Number one, there's no reason every one of you shouldn't be here Sunday night. And number two, there's no reason every one of us shouldn't stand up and thank God. Plain and simple. Listen to what it says, Isaiah. Declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. Not because of what Tony does. Not because of what Ken does. Not what cause Terry does or Kirby or Kevin or Rick or any of us. Because what God does. Amen. I want to close with this scripture in Philippians chapter 4. I told you we'd be studying the Apostle Paul. He is by far, outside of Jesus, the Apostle Paul is my favorite character, person. He's not a character. Favorite person in the Bible. Because, folks, Paul was us. Amen? Paul was us. And I hope every one of you have had an experience with God like Paul did on the road. Mine was in a truck. I guess I was on a road. I wasn't going the same place Paul was, but I was going, I was going to Hector. Uh, that's the day that changed my life. That's the day I gave my truly, truly gave my heart and soul to Jesus Christ, and I repented and turned from my sins and did my best to live for him. But listen to how Paul says exactly what I've been saying, but in a different way different terms in Philippians chapter 4 verses 11 and 12 this is the apostle Paul he says not that I speak in respect of want for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith be content I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need. Have you reached that point in your life? Have you reached, folks, you can reach that point. There's a lot of things in this Bible that we'll say, oh, I, I, I can't get there. <laughs> you can get to where the Apostle Paul was. You can get to wherever, no matter what's happening in your life, you're content and you're thankful. Amen? I can remember... When I was a young man, I wanted a lot of things. Anybody else in here ever used to want a lot of things? <laughs> and view getting those things as success? That changed for me. There's no thing that you could get me now that would bring me happiness. What brings me joy and happiness is first of all knowing the salvation of my children and my wife. Then knowing the salvation of my church and my family. When I'm unsure of that, my heart is heavy. But outside of that, when you look at the world, and that's what Paul was doing, there will be days when you're hungry, and there will be days when you're full. There will be days when you're hurting, and there will be days when you feel good. There will be days when you're up here on a spiritual mountain, and there will be days when you're in the valley. I wish I could tell you you were always on the mountain, but that'd be a lie, friend, because there'll be some days you'll be in the valley. But listen to what Paul said. No matter where I am, no matter what's going on, I am content knowing that I belong to Jesus Christ. That's where I want you to be today. And if you can't say that today, I'm fixing to open up an invitation to this altar 
And I invite you ahead of time to come to this altar and give your heart and soul to Jesus Christ and turn from your sin and live for him so that you can be content no matter where you're at. And then when those people leave you from talking to you, I want them to have that joy from visiting with you because who were they really visiting with if you allow him to speak through you? They were actually visiting with God. If you would, stand with me all over this building. I'm just going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes. And I want to ask you the most important question that anybody can ask you. In your heart this morning, is there any doubt that you've made the decision to live for Jesus Christ? Now, I cannot make you want to make that decision, but I pray you do. God won't make you. He's offering it to you. He's offering you heaven. He's offering you salvation. Do you want that this morning? Do you, are you tired of living where you've been living? Are you tired of, of being down? Are you tired of struggling? Are you tired of what the world is kicking you every time you're down? Are you tired of that? Do you want something new? God paid the price for you. That no matter what sin you're living in, no matter what sin you've committed, Jesus Christ has paid the price. And the devil will tell you, the devil will lie to you and say, friend, you, you're too deep, you're too far gone. And Jesus just simply whispers, not true, child. Come to me today. And I will forgive you of your sins. I will cast them as far as the east is from the west. Is that a decision this morning that you're ready to make? I'm not going to tell you that life gets easy after that, but I can tell you that your destination changes. Is that a, is that a decision that you want to make this morning? This morning, are you already a child of God? But maybe the joy hadn't been showing in you. Maybe you've been looking at the cup half empty instead of half full. Do you just need a touch from God this morning? Maybe you feel like you owe him some thanks. If you, if you just need to talk to God for any reason this morning, we'll pray with you. Every one of us owe him more than we give him. I promise you that beyond a shadow of a doubt. Just ask yourself this morning one final thing. If someone runs into me and visits with me for a short time, do they know who my Father is? Am I reflecting Him or am I reflecting the world?